Hi, this is Nabil Asif from Click Australia. In this demonstration, I'll be showing you advanced forecasting capabilities that I've recently added to my Python server-side extension for Click. I'm going to refer to this extension as PyTools in this video. First, we're going to look at how we can pass multiple variables to a forecasting algorithm to build more complex models. Then we'll see how deep learning allows us to tackle even more complex sequence prediction problems. All of this will be done entirely in Click, using PyTools in the background to provide the capabilities to use these advanced data science techniques. For the first part, we're going to use Profit, which is an open source forecasting library published by the data science team at Facebook. With the recent updates to PyTools, we now have the ability to use additional regressors as part of a Profit model. So let's look at an example of how to use this technique. This app is based on a bike sharing dataset I found on Kaggle. It gives us two areas of data for bike rentals in Washington. We used 2011 data for training our model, holding back 2012 data for testing. For our baseline forecast, we simply use historical values of the number of bike rentals to make predictions for the next year. This naive forecast is represented by the light blue line here, which we can see does not do well in predicting the actual values shown here in light gray. Now in our data set, we have additional variables which could provide important information to the model. Bike rentals may be quite sensitive to the weather, for example, and a good model will need to take this into consideration. I've set up this sheet to let me choose different fields that I can pass to the model. Profit considers these fields as additional regressors for the forecast. These regressors need to provide values for historical data, as well as for the future periods. Having selected temperature and weather, we can see that our forecast has improved significantly. Overall, the predictions are much closer to actual values and the peaks and crows seem to be aligning well, at least for the first few months. Once we have selected the additional regressors we want to pass to our model, we can train a final model using the entire dataset. And this gives us a more robust model for predicting future values. Up till now, we were using the profit functions in real time, with Click and PyTools exchanging data every time we made a selection. However, these capabilities can also be pre-calculated in the click load script. Here I have generated the same forecast in the load process for this app, and also extracted the trend and seasonality components for this time series. This app and the documentation on how to use these capabilities is available on the PyTools repository on GitHub. Head over to the Usage section where you will find this app. And in the documentation, you'll find help on using additional regressors with Profit in your own Click apps. Now, Profit is a great forecasting library, but some sequence prediction problems require more complex modeling. For example, you might have many different variables, including categorical ones, that need to be considered in the model. And quite often, you won't have information on these variables for the future, like it's required in Profit. In terms of use cases, consider that to predict sales of a software, for example, uh, we can make better predictions by considering leads, opportunities, and marketing campaigns. When forecasting solar power generation, we need to consider variables such as cloud cover and hours of daylight. For such use cases, neural networks offer us powerful capabilities for modeling sequence prediction problems. Deep learning models are capable of learning patterns from sequential data, can take in multiple input variables, and be set up to look at a certain number of periods, for instance, 30 days, and make multi-step predictions, for example, for the next seven days. With convolutional neural networks, we have the capability to learn patterns from sequential data. And with long short-term memory networks, we can build models that retain information on long-term dependencies. In this app, we will use Keras, 
a deep learning library together with TensorFlow as the backend to make predictions on the same bike rentals dataset we used earlier. PyTools provides capabilities to train and test the model entirely through the click load process. We simply set up some key inputs for our model training and then call a series of functions which automate the training and testing process. I won't go into the details here, but all this is documented on my GitHub repository. At a high level, we set up different neural networks that we want to train and test. In this case, I have four variants, two of which are convolutional long short-term memory networks and two are causal convolutional networks. The architecture for the neural networks is defined through a table in Click. This follows the conventions of the Keras library, which provides a simple way to define a sequential stack of layers, which usually make up a neural network. The only difference here is that we are also specifying the data types, so these can be handled correctly during communication from Click to Python. I've built these architectures for time series predictions, but you can come up with your own variants using reference architectures for neural networks available online. These are the inputs to our models. Compared to profit, our deep learning models can handle more variables and more complex relationships in the data. Since neural networks need a lot of data for training, I used 18 months of daily data for training the models and six months for testing. This is an example of a function call to PyTools from the click load script. We're simply passing in a table of data and receiving back the response in another table. When I load this app, it will trigger the function calls that will train and test this app. We can see here as training begins and the model tries to reduce the training loss at each epoch by adjusting its internal parameters. Here we can see the results of a model training and testing. The training loss curve shows how the models were optimized at each epoch of going over the entire training data. The curve flattens out, showing that the models learned as much as they could from this particular dataset. Here we can see the total loss per month over the test dataset for each of the models. With an average of 6,258 bike rentals per day in 2012, we can see some of our models performed quite well for the first three months. In October 2012, Washington was affected by Hurricane Sandy. This obviously threw off our predictions because we did not feed in information on extreme weather events to our models. On this sheet, we can explore predictions against unseen data. My favorites were the causal convolutional networks because their architecture caters for the causality inherent to time series data, as opposed to standard CNNs, uh, which were built for processing images here we can simulate the use of neural network for prediction in what is called a walk forward method. Our model takes in 31 days of historical data to make a prediction. We can control how many days ahead we want to predict by limiting the dates being plotted on this chart in click. For each prediction, this model will make use of the previous predictions as input as well as the other input variables. In a real use case, we would continuously feed in actual values to maintain accuracy of the model. Here, we simulate this by only predicting seven days ahead at a time. Every time I click next, we move ahead by a single day, always feeding in actual values for the previous 31 days. This final model was trained to make seven days of predictions at a time, using only historical data for the last 30 days. This is useful for when we don't have any information about the future and need accurate forecast for a specified number of steps. Here we will always walk forward by seven days, feeding in actual data for the previous 30 days to the model. 
we can see that this model generally follows the trend over the seven days fairly well. This app and help on training and testing deep learning models with Click and Pi tools is available on the GitHub repository as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and it motivates you to tackle more complex analytics with your Click deployment. Thank you. Thank you.